Hey guys, right now I'm going to talk very briefly about the file hierarchy standard. Now, everything starts from the root of the file system, which we represent with a forward slash. So going to my computer over here, I'm going to run the ls command against the, uh, the root of my file system. And you can see a number of directories that are resonant below that. And they are all directly below the root of the file system. Again, this is our starting point. And we have a number of, of important directories that I'm going to be highlighting right now. So let's go and deal with them in, um, in this order. Yeah, from left to right. So we have the bin directory, and this is where we would find binaries. In other words, executables. And the binaries that are found below bin are typically usable by all users of the system. As opposed to a counterpart, or its counterpart over here, called uh, sbin. sbin, system binaries. Again, these are programs. However, they are typically only usable by the root user. Now, if you're looking at the colorization of those two directories, you may find it quite odd. Uh, and that is because they are, in fact, symbolic links. So bin on a rel8 system points to usr bin and sbin points to usr sbin. Now you see that usr directory is also very important. It stands for Unix system resources. And below the usr uh, directory, you'll find a number of important directories far beyond the scope of this class. However, I would just like to highlight at this stage that that is where we would find the actual binaries. So if you're looking for the path to a program like the ls command, it is most likely below usr bin and then the path is ls and there it is and if i'm going to try and do a directory listing right now against sbin um, you can see that there is no ls command or there's no ls file below usr sbin now conversely we are looking for a program called ip to do ip address management uh, from the command line so i'm going to say all right show me the file usr bin ip and you can see over here that uh, it says no such file or directory. And again, it's because the IP command, you can, it kind of sounds like it's a systems administration command. And um, if it is a systems administration command, it's most likely below USR SBIN. So let's go and find out if that is true. And you can see, yeah, that directory listing does in fact work. Now, a common command that we can make use of to, uh, to help us find where files are is the where is command. So I could have just said, where is ls? And you can see over here that it gives me a couple of references. And the first one is to the binary. The other ones uh, have got no reference to binaries in their paths. And similarly, if I had to say, where is IP? You can see over here, again, it returns a number of results. And one of them is that the IP file, or there's an IP binary below USR SBIN. Now, we also have the boot directory. And the boot directory is really important because it does have the kernel. That is where the kernel is, as well as the files necessary to initialize and to load the kernel. So this over here, the VM Linux file, that is the very Linux kernel, the core of the operating system and its associated files. And then we also have uh, a number of other resources, namely Grub2, which is implemented as the bootloader. This is used to initialize or to load the Linux kernel. We have a directory called dev, which is where device files typically would go. Uh, we have Etsy. Now, Etsy is really cool because Etsy stands for Extended Text Configurations. And this is where you would go to look for configuration files. So if you're looking for a configuration file for your web server, or how about your SSH server, it is most likely below Etsy. Now, the FHS also specifies where home directories go. Now, normal user home directories go below slash home. So if you have a look at the contents of that, we have a directory called student, which is below home, which is below the root of my file system. Now, root users home directory is slash root. So it's not like this. It is in fact slash root and the word root over there. We also have the lib and lib64 directories. This is where application libraries typically go. This would be things like, uh, like shared code. Other directories that I'd like to call out at this stage would include uh, TMP. So TMP is a form of temporary space. And that is not the only place where we find TMP or temporary space. Because we have another important directory called var, variable data. That is what the var file system is all about. And this would include things like uh, spool directories and files, um, administrative and logging data, transient and temporary files. Uh, that is what would be stored below var. So if we have a look below var right now, you can see that we have uh, um, some cache related information. We have some logs. And we have another unit of temporary space over here. So there are two directories, two temp directories, and you may be wondering, well, what's the difference between the two? Because uh, I can kind of see that they are independent temp directories because they don't look uh, like symbolic links. The one doesn't point to the other one. It's quite simple. Um, 
the TMP directory below the root of the file system, in other words, this one over here, that has got a, t a purging policy of 10 days. So the contents of that file would be clear, the contents of that directory would be cleared every single, uh, every 10 days. As opposed to var TMP, and this is the other units of temporary storage that we have, is cleared every 30 days. So remember, that was some very basic information about the file hierarchy standard. And if you want more information, there are many great references, not only on your, on your systems, but also on the internet. So I would encourage you to explore this a little bit more. And with that, it does bring this video to an end. I will see you in the next chapter.